You be the child of God. Don't let the devil con you into giving up. Amen. It's no time for giving up. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to the one that endure to the end. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> Amen. I'm in it to win it. The uh, other day I was at the restaurant. I heard the little girl say to her mom, I'm in it to win it. She said, what are you talking about? <laughs> Amen. The battle is the Lord. And the word declared, he giveth us the victory. <clears throat> go with me to Romans. Uh, well, let's go back to first John, uh, third John, the second verse. And then we'll come back to uh, Romans 12 chapter. I said to you, I got it, woke me up about 2.30 in the morning, and I heard Romans 12, 1 and 2, then quoted over and over again. And uh, I'm going to incorporate that into the lesson tonight. Thank you, Lord. Y'all pray for me that we ain't got me. John said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Amen. Amen. Paul said, uh, We are to work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. I'm beginning to realize why there's so much failure among the people of God. They got a thinking problem. <laughs> they got a thinking problem. Somebody said a thinking problem. Thinking. Amen. Now that's happening because they are not renewing their mind or they don't know what to say. Hello, somebody. Yeah. We need to learn what God would have us to say in everything. Romans the 12th chapter and the first verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, <clears throat> by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's the least you can do. And then Paul said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And be not conformed to this world. Yes. I want to go to the contemporary version of the Bible to read that. Don't be like the people of this world. That's what that second verse said in the contemporary version. But let God change the way you think. Then you will know how to do everything that is good and pleasing to him. Amen. Did y'all see that? Did you hear that? Don't be like the world. Look your neighbor and say, don't be like the world. But you got to learn to think like God would have you to think. Amen? Yeah. Now, just stay with me, walk with me, learn with me. Matthew 12 <clears throat> and 34. Could one of y'all give me some juice or something? 
Matthew 12, chapter 34, verse. Well, let's start the 33rd. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can he be an evil? Speak good things. Here's a principle. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You're going to say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaker. The gist of what's coming out of your mouth is what's in your heart. Thank you, Don. Do you can say the gist of what's coming out your mouth is what's in your heart. You're not what you say every once in a while, but what you say on a continual basis. Now look at the 15th chapter of Matthew. They had uh, the Pharisees, Sadducees, whatever you want to call them, had a deep. <laughs> Jesus, because his disciples was eating with unwashing hands. And Jesus said something to them that was so pertinent that I think we need to look at it. Hold on a second. I'm, I got to find that verse. Let's start 73. Do not ye understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out in the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. So don't tell me your words ain't important. Amen. That's what we're talking about, your words. And he said, your words can defile you. Now, notice what else he goes on to say. For out of the heart proceeds, what? Evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. What? Murders. Adulteries. Fornication, that's sexual immorality. Thefts. False witness. Blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwatching hands defile not a man. Now, we're not going to get into that because we know about hygiene. But he's trying to make a point. The man, uh, as God said in Matthew 4 and 4, does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds will follow the mouth of God. So the man is not just physical. Amen. According to the, uh, uh, the scripture, the Bible said in the second chapter of James and somewhere around that 20, first 22nd verse, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. And we go back to Ecclesiastes 12 and 11. It said when man dies, his spirit goes back to God that gave him. Signifying that the spirit is the life of the flesh. Amen. So the man is a spirit that possesses an identity, which is the soul, and lives in the body. Did y'all get that part? Amen. So now it's up to that spirit man to control the life of the body. But when Adam sinned, he caused mankind to fall out of spirit consciousness into flesh consciousness. And we became more aware of our physical existence than our spiritual existence. Amen. Amen. Now, a lot of the uh, Asian and probably some other cultures too, but for some reason I've just been studying them more. A lot of the Asian culture, they're more spirit-minded than natural mind. 
the whole culture is built around spiritual things. I didn't say it was good. Amen. I just said it was spiritual. And when you look at some of the, uh, what gave me a great revelation that they had some kind of spiritual experience, because when I looked at a lot of those statues they got, they looked like demons. And if I, had, if I had not been in the spirit world and seen demons, I would have never thought that. Are you hearing me? So it let me know that they had some kind of spiritual enlightenment that allowed them to look into the spirit realm. Now, why they became so enamored with it, that's another story. Amen. Amen. But the reality of it is that they are more sensitive and aware of spiritual things than we are. So be careful when you're watching their movies. I, I have nothing against the Chinese people, but there's a part of their political system that is utilizing these movies to brainwash people. Amen. Now, our culture does it too, yeah. but theirs is more subtle because most of us don't speak Mandarin or speak Chinese. So what they, they can push through, you would never know. So the, the translator, or whatever you call that, the subtitle, is not going to tell you exactly what they're saying. Amen. And a lot of children are being corrupted by these, these um, what do they call them, these animated, animated movies. So they are definitely ungodly. Now some of them make an allurement to God, but you got to read through all of the garbage. Y'all got what I'm saying? And so you got to wait through all that other garbage just to get to the little bit, little bit of good. So it's just best to just leave it alone. But I said all that to say this. So we're not conscious of the fact that what's coming out of our mouth is spiritual. So we just assume it's just speech, just talk. But man was the only creature that God created with the ability to formulate words. One, one translation when it said God uh, created, <clears throat> breathed the nostrils of the breath of life and he became a living being, a living soul. It didn't say soul, it said a speaking being. Speaking, talking being. Amen. So Adam actually, once you got up off that ground, was talking to God. Amen. So now when we look at that, then we realize that there's a little bit more in our speech than most of us comprehend. You go back and study that 12th chapter of Matthew, you find he said, go we'll give an account of every out of word. Amen. Amen. And that's why we have to be careful what we let come out of our mouths. Yes. Right? Because when we, now look at Proverbs 16 chapter, the first verse. And right after that, we're going to pray because we can let it get deep. But not really deep, but, you know, some people, they, they call it deep. I hope y'all can understand my speech. The preparation of the heart in, in man and the alpha of the tongue is from the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we're grateful and thankful for this opportunity to break the bread of life and share with the saints tonight what you put in my spirit. I pray that you'll make it clear that they can understand what I'm saying and receive this word that will save their soul. Saving the defeated, the power broken and destroyed. What he tried to do is undone. What you established is so. In Jesus, Yeshua's name I pray. And they want to say amen. amen. And amen again. Amen. So the responsibility of making sure that what comes out your mouth is yours. It falls on your shoulders. No one else's. <coughs> now, I, 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 my, my mind is going to jump ahead, but I got to take my time and walk you through this. So this is why it is necessary to be not conformed to the world. Not to be like the world, act like the world, talk like the world. Because when you take on their words and their habits, you create and project what they do. Hello? Yeah. The Bible tells us that you're not of the world. 
Hello, somebody. Then it tells the love not the things of the world. Amen. So we must remember that God called us out of that for a purpose. And I'm going to say, as Paul said, to restore us to fellowship with him. So don't let your words sever that connection. Why? Why is that so important? Because so with the heart man believe on the righteousness, and with the what? Mouth confession is made on the salvation. So your mouth is saying what's going to either save you or destroy you. Amen. Now, if the preparation of the heart is our responsibility, and then we notice it said, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord, then we must find out what God say. Amen. So is that our responsibility? Everybody turn to 2 Timothy, the second chapter. Fifteenth and fifteen verse. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of truth, according to St. John 17, 17, he said, Thy word is truth. In the third chapter, in the 16th verse, but let's go back to the 15th verse, because he was talking about Timothy. And he said that from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to do what, everybody? What did it say? Make you wise. Make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Make you what? Wise. They make you what? Wise. So the scriptures makes us wise. Say it again. The scriptures makes us wise. Now look at the next verse. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So <coughs> if all scripture is given by inspiration of God, then if you say what the scriptures say about the thing, that's what God say. Amen. If you say what the scriptures say about the thing, that's what God says. If that's what God says, then it has to become a line up, if you keep saying it, to what God says. Amen. Amen. So shall my word be. It goes out of my mouth. Isaiah 55 and 11. It shall what? But what? It shall not return to me bored, but the comfort that which I plead and prosper in the thing which I sin it. So if you keep saying it, that thing that you're talking about Eventually, must align with what God says about it. Amen. That's why you cannot. That's why Paul said, "Hold fast to your profession of faith without wavering." Then another place said, "Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward, for you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you'll obtain the promise." So we got to learn to say what God say consistently and persistently. Amen. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. So let's sell it. If God inspired it, if God told him to say it, then it's what God's judgment is about the matter. So, that, so the Bible said, the scripture said, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're not saved, get to call him. Amen. So that's how it works. Amen. Amen. And I like to say a lot of times, save also denotes deliverance. So if you're a saint of God, you're a child of God, and you're already born again, and you're going through something, and it looks like it just won't change, well, he said, call on the name of the Lord. Find your spot and just start calling. Amen. He will hear you and answer you. Now, 
stay with me about this preparation now, because you need to understand this. The 119th Psalm. Because this is what's going on in the world, the church world, and the world, and why a lot of people have left the church, because they want God to save them to do it without them having anything to do with it. Am I right? 119th Psalm, the 11th verse. The preparation of the heart is your responsibility. And you must prepare in the scripture what God say about things. The, 19, uh, the 11th verse says, the 119th Psalm, 11th verse, By word have I hid in my heart. By word have I, that's David talking, if I say I, hid in my heart. So who did the hiding? Who did the hiding? And when Paul says study, who does the study? Because you're to show yourself a workman to prove unto God. Right? And then he told Timothy they're able to make him wise unto salvation. Amen? Through faith in Christ Jesus. So now we realize that all that responsibility fall back on us, then this, <clears throat> the point of the finger disappears. Amen. We go back and look in the mirror and say, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. Amen. As a newborn babe in Christ, 1 Peter 1 and 23, desire the sincere milk of the word. So you can grow that by. Because that is the only way you go change the way you see and perceive things. Be not conformed to the world. Don't be like the world. Don't think like the world thinks. That's the only way. You're going to have to find out what God says. Hide that in your heart. Why? Because out of the heart comes all the lies and all that other kind of stuff. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth goes weak. So when you hear a lot of people saying, well, I didn't mean that. Yeah, you did. It was in your heart. Or you will never see it. Amen. Hello? The Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart be also. So it reveals what you've been meditating on. Amen. Amen? If you be risen with Christ, seek those things. For Christ is seated on the right hand of the majesty on high. Amen. Set your affection on heavenly things. So he said, where your treasure, Jesus said it, where your treasure is, there will your are or your affection be also. So if you're letting garbage come out your mouth, mm -hmm. that's nobody. That's where your heart's at. Mm -hmm. He'd be using them, them profane words and say, I didn't mean that. Yeah, you did. Because you put it in there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now let's look at this 11 verse again. David said, What thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee? Didn't he say? Amen. I had to do it. David said, I had to do it. Amen. I hear your word in my heart that I'll not sin against you. Yes. If you look back at the ninth verse, young people, everybody read. Verse 4. By taking heed to your word. Jesus said in St. John 15 and 3, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Amen. One of the things he said out of the heart comes with sexual immorality. What does God say about sex? Hebrews. Let's see if I find it. Hebrews. It's in Hebrews. I don't know where, but we'll find it. <laughs> it's in Hebrews somewhere. Hold on, y'all. Uh, I'll grab that phone. Look at that. We'll look at it. Said, uh, married bed is holy and undivided. You all see the verse? Which one is it? What verse is it? Which verse is it? Help me out, y'all. Or did I miss the chapter or the book? Is it in Hebrews? We go find it before we quit now. 
because I want y'all to see the oh there it is it's the thirteenth chapter four verse. <clears throat> Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but homongers and adulterers, God will cherish. What did he say? Let's look at that in the contemporary. What verse is that? 13 and 4. Let's look in the contemporary and see what the contemporary version say. Thank God for victory. Amen. 13 and 4. Have respect for marriage. Always be faithful to your partner because God will punish anyone who is immoral or unfaithful in marriage. Now, I'm not among the adulterers, he will judge. And the contemporary said, punish. Amen. So, what did God say about, let's go to the sixth chapter book of 1 Corinthians. Having sex outside of it. Let's find out what God said. Because David said, I hear his word in my heart, that I'm not sin against him. See, once you have my word is already, you know, I'm struggling right now. Once you allow the world to program your mind to think that this is common. It's normal, it's natural, that even being a Christian, you begin to stumble and fumble with that question. But there is no question when you realize that God's word is truth. Amen. And you got to study it in order to understand what truth is. Sixth chapter and the third. 13 verse. Meats for the belly and belly for the meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now watch this. Now the body is not for sexual immorality. But for who? The Lord. And the Lord for the body. And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? But God forbid. Shall I take those members and make them the members of a harlot? Our whole bumper. God forbid. Isn't that what he said? Now let's go to the seventh chapter. Read the first and second verse. Now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, what is it? What is it? That every man have his own wife. And every woman have her what? Own, own husband. husband. Yes, Lord. There are so many of my, I don't know what we call them, peers, my fellow ministers, that know this stuff is rampant in their church. I will not take the time to read you what I just read to you. How is that possible? Because they're more concerned about the world's definition for success than they are God's. Paul said, if I bring no fruit unto perfection, then my labor have been in vain. In other words, I work for nothing. I preach the gospel for years for nothing. But most ministers don't look at it like that. They think if they don't have people come to church, then they fail. So they want to try to get the church full of people. The church should be full of Christians, born again believers, not full of the world. Because if it's full of the world, it's no longer the church. Because the church is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Those who have been baptized by one spirit in the one body made a drink of that body by one spirit. That's what the church is. Amen. 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 Now look at the neighbor and say, remember, you must renew your mind. Because you don't renew your mind, 
You think nothing's wrong with you. Because I, I start off, I tell you, I press, I tell you, Adam fell from spirit consciousness to God consciousness to flesh consciousness. So when you become born again, now you are spirit conscious, so you got to build on that. And a newborn babe in Christ, desire to sense the milk of the word of God. Right? And the preparation of the heart is your responsibility. And David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Right? That I'm not sinned against you. Paul told Timothy, it was able to make him, the scripture was able to make him rise on the salvation. Now, I know a lot of people want to know, I always on book, chapter, and verse. Why are you always talking about book, chapter, and verse? Because God's not coming back down here Amen. <laughs> to the rid of judges or to look at you and say something. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? And John warned us about trying to figure out a voice. Because he said there are many voices going in the world. There are many spirits going out in the world. But you got to try them. How are you going to try them? David said, it was a lamp under my feet and a light upon my path. Amen. Paul said, well, there's a street that they know not of. It's the word of God. But yet, people want to believe if it feels right. A spirit is not a feeling. Amen. So any spirit that comes along can create, if you want to fool you, deceive you, because Satan is the father of hope. To deceive you to make you feel good about it. Amen. The devil can heal. The devil can take out of you what he put on you. The devil can bless you with money and gold and silver and all that kind of stuff. But you know the difference between his blessing and God's? The devil's blessing has sorrow for him. But God's blessings have no sorrow for him. Every person can hit him coming down from the Father of life. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. So whenever Satan gives you something, he's going to take something more dear to you from you. You got to pay for it. And, and like this thing going on with Hollywood actors and, and sports stars and, <clears throat> and entertainment, all of these, the thing, even some business, are selling their soul yes. for a moment of fortune and fame. But at the end, they're miserable. And they end up having to give up everything. And many of them, when they, they, they do the ritual, they end up giving up a loved one. That's a fact. It's called a blood sacrifice. Amen. They have to sacrifice them. And then a lot of them don't, they will never tell it. And someone will tell you that when they had to make that agreement, they had, that one, they had to say there was no God and that they were their own God. Uh, who, 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 who told that lie to start with? The devil. It's the same old lie. The same old lie. So he wants them to do that so that they can reject their creator. And when you reject your creator, you cut yourself off from the source of lie. And now you just embrace the annihilator of lie because he's a murderer. Y'all got it? So I read those things about that's just one thing about sin. The world has went food with. Amen. Uh, God created them, male and female, created he them. And he said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Who did he tell to replenish the earth? The male and the female. Am I right? The Bible said God created them, male and female. Right? So all you got to do is go to the rich and go back to the oldest picture and description of, the, of a man. And you know what a man looked like. Amen. Go all the way back to the oldest picture and image of a female. And you know what a woman looked like. Amen. So once you do that, and you're a woman, and you're looking at a man, you'll know you're a woman. Amen. And if you're a man looking at a woman, you'll know you're a man. Because you look at the difference of your anatomy. And it tells you. But because man thinks that uh, the devil has so corrupted and perverted their mind that they think it could be whatever they want it to be. Yeah. That's called fantasy. Amen. 
That's fantasy. You have to go get somebody to cut you up, butcher you up. Yeah. So you can look like something that you're not. It don't change what you are inside. Amen. It don't change your DNA. Y'all got it? What is the Y chromosome? And the, what's, what's the chromosome? X and Y. It don't change that. <laughs> but yet they want to believe the opposite because somebody told them they can be whatever they want to be. Uh, because you feel you like that. No, it's something messing with your mind and distorting your perception of things. Amen. And we taught here some years ago, and I may do another lesson on it, that uh, spirit is a form of energy. Your body functions by electrical impulses. Your thoughts are electrical impulses. They've gotten so smart in science now, they can actually read your brain impulses and know what you're thinking. Amen. So that's a fact. And, and eventually it's going to be so unique and so perfected that they're going to start arresting people for thinking about uh, committing a crime. Amen. But how would they know? Because they got a machine now that they can put in the room and can pick up your brain waves and decipher them. This thing is so awesome that a woman is taking it now and learn how to talk to babies. Isn't that something? I'm going to leave that alone. That's, that's neither here nor there, but I'm just trying to share with you that uh, your electrical impulses can be influenced for your neighbors that they can be influenced. So if your thoughts are electrical impulses, and a spirit of lust come on you. What is it going to do? It's going to give you an impulse of lust. If a spirit of homosexuality, but that ain't, that ain't the kind of spirit it is. I'll tell you all later on when I start teaching about them demons. But uh, that spirit come on you, what kind of thought it will put in your mind? No, it's going to give you a thought of feelings toward the same sex. Oh, they look good. <laughs> and you all said, you know, devil, it's a lie. <laughs> Amen. 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 Put the shield up. But because the world tells you it's nothing wrong with that, you see all these little girls holding hands and kissing, little boys holding hands and kissing. Twisted. Because their mind has not yet been set on what is right and what is wrong. That's why they want to go into the school system early and brainwash them to promote their agenda. They know that agenda leads to destruction. Y'all understand that, right? Amen. But the, the, the perpetrator behind it, see that they're going to be able to survive. They're doing this at the whim of, of Belial to destroy mankind because God created man in his image and not his likeness. Y'all got it? Amen. That's the goal. It's not about them have, having people feel better about themselves and fulfilling their desire to be whatever they want to be. Because mm -mm. they know that don't work. Amen. Some of them know it don't work because they practice it. So I understand that if it go against what God said, it's of the world. Uh, <clears throat> what God said about lying. Say what? Lie not one to another, brother. Y'all well, turn the heat down a little bit. Lie not one to another, brother. And all lies you have, they part in the lake. All liars, white, blue, green, yellow, orange, whatever, are black. They're going to have their part in the lake. Are y'all getting this thing? So when we begin to allow the world to creep in, then our minds begin to think it's okay. And though we may not do it, we're tolerated from those that we associate with. 
Two can't walk together. Be not unequally yoked together. Amen. So we got to come to the realization that these things are influential. And if you keep hanging around people like that, then you're going to mess around and do it and not be convicted. Because it will seal your conscience with a hot iron. Be not like the world. Amen. Love not the world through the things that are in the world. For the love of the world be in you. The love of the Father is not in you. Now, Pastor, why is it so important that we learn to say what God say? I'm not just dealing with you saying what God say. Because there are a lot of people saying what God say, but it don't work. I got to deal with the hard part first. Because, see, you can say what you want to say out of your mouth and not have any power. Amen. It's got to come out your you got what I'm saying? It is the sword of the spirit, not the sword of your mind, or the sword of your mouth, or the sword of your spirit. So if you say it out your head, there's no power to it. That's why a lot of people say, Jesus, 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 didn't never work. But they say it out their head. They're not really calling him from their heart. They even rebuke the devil in that name. Nothing happens. Because the devil knows they You know they're a hypocrite. Thank you very much. They have no relationship with the Lord. So that is why I'm dealing with the heart issue first. So that word has got to be hidden in your heart. Amen. Joshua 1 and 8 said, This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do. The more you do a thing, it gets down into you. Amen. I, don't, I don't fully comprehend the process. But somebody said one time that your cells have memory. Y'all hear me? And then one guy went so far to say that your stomach has the biggest, largest memory. It makes you wonder because you remember the Bible said out, out, of, <laughs> out of the belly for the river of the living water. So I think about that thing. I said, you know, if the body has memory, that's where when people I'm just going to use me. When I didn't know any better, I repented and asked God to forgive me. I was in the martial arts for a long time. And it came a time to be tested. So because I was at another level, the the the, the instructor, I think they call him some names for call, but the instructor told me to uh, you know, initiate my kata. That's what it's called, cop. But I finna call my instructor something they need for the call. But uh <laughs> but uh he told me to initiate my carter. So I initiated the carter and in my mind I said I'm gonna flow. Say it again, Dick. In spirit. So I said, I'm gonna flow with it. So when I finished it, he said, My mouth was open, he said, I don't believe it. Say, do it again. So I said, I'm gonna do it again. I flowed in it just like, like dancing fluently. He said, I can't believe you excuse that call it that perfect. But you know what had happened? I let it get from my mind down to my spirit. And my spirit took over my body. So let me rephrase it a different way. I let it get into my subconscious. And by letting it get into my subconscious, it got into my spirit and the control of my body. That's what happens when you continually hang around anything. I was just gonna say bad thing, but anything. If you keep hanging around it, you keep watching it, keep listening to it, keep doing it, eventually you won't even need to think about doing it. You just do it without thinking about it. Y'all got it? That's what God wants to be with his word. Well, that word has so seasoned our thoughts and our, and our words that it's no longer us, but him. Amen. The other light, the other soul. Y'all get what I'm saying? Amen. So once you get it in your heart, your spirit man, I ain't talking about that thing, boom, 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 boom. I'm talking about your spirit man, the real you, the inner you. Once you get it down in there, then it becomes energy, it becomes force, it becomes power, it becomes nature. Second nature. Amen. So when you speak, it's like you. 
<laughs> There's a life force in your body. Many witches, well, our sauce, and all of them have learned how to use it. Mystic shamans, y'all follow what I'm saying? Buddhist monks and all of them have learned how to use it. I'm not going to call the name of the, the, the modern names that they use and they get people, and, and, and they have used some, learned how to use the heat people. Did y'all hear me? And it's because they, they found out how to communicate with their spirit being apart from God. The Bible forbids that. Did y'all hear me? It forbids that. Actually, one of the writers talked about separating themselves sensually. And it's forbidden. Well, why can't I? Because you still got unregenerated spirit. The spirit is still unsaved. <laughs> Who is our guide? The Holy Spirit. Who is our teacher? The Holy Spirit. Who transforms us into the image of Christ? The Holy Spirit. Who empowers us? So when you understand that it's not you doing it, it's the Holy Spirit that's doing it, then you realize the reality behind it is that you're not trying to be God. You're letting God be God. The reason why these other guys are trying to learn how to, I tell you all that there are many Buddhists, and, and Buddhists were just men that claimed how we enlightenment that was total spirituality. And my third bone, I did the carter, that meant I was totally, my, I messed around and got that mess in my spirit, and my spirit knew it and was able to use my body to do it. Amen. That means once I did it, I was completely spiritual. I was enlightened. Amen. That's what that means. Amen. And so a lot of people, because they don't know that, there are a lot of preachers in the pulpit functioning by psychic and soulless energy and calling it God. Amen. But they have no stance on right and wrong. Y'all got what I'm saying? Amen. But they really get them calling people out, reading them, telling them about this. And how can you call out somebody living in sin and speak something good into their life? How are you going to bless what's cursed? You got to get them delivered first. Amen. Amen. But that's going on everywhere. Because they're about the world's uh, criteria for success. Not making disciples. Amen. 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 So once we get the word of God in our spirit, do you all know the word is God? I used to use this illustration. I'll, I'll, I'm going to have to buy me one so I can show it to you every time I use this illustration. My brain hands just set it up on the table. So I have it. Y'all seen the boat in the bottom? You ever ask how in the world they got that boat in the bottom? I did for years till they showed on, on YouTube or TV on the internet somewhere. And I was watching it. They, they, they actually cut the bottom off the bottom, put the boat in there, and, and put the bottom back on it. <laughs> they didn't be you know, the home tools. And be. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Amen. But the but the, the the principle I got behind it was you can create the image of Christ in you by hiding the word, the description of him in you. Amen. Amen. Let's 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 go back to thou shalt meditate on it day and night. That is the process of preparing your heart and renewing your mind. Y'all got it? See, a lot of people, they, they jump, somebody say generalize. I read for familiarity. I study. What I tell y'all study for? No, that's how you study. You read for familiarity. You study for what? Understanding. Now, if you're dealing with certain issues, as the mayor said, study that issue. If you need faith in a certain area, you study that issue. If it's healing, right? If it's peace, joy, love, right? Study what the Bible says about it. Get that in your door. That when, if the devil, you know, not metaphorically, stomping your head. 
is in your spirit. Amen. It won't matter how much you hear it hurting. Amen. The word will come out your spirit. But even if it was coming out your head, it wouldn't have no power. But if it was coming out your spirit, it's the sword of the spirit, and it would cut him. Amen. It would drive him away. Amen. So that's why we got to get that word down in our spirit, meditating in a day and night, so we train our spirits to respond the way God responds. Amen. To say what God was saying. Amen. Amen. The word of God declared that they that hear you, hear him, and him that's in him. So once you start saying it, once you get in your spirit and you start saying it, now is God talking. Amen. And when God speaks, who can refuse to obey? Amen. Now, I'm, I'm going to cross over a minute just to go back to the Asian culture, what they do. They use certain mantras to focus to get into the spirit. That's what they do. Many, many, many of the cultures, they call it transcendental meditation, yoga, all that kind of stuff. Some of you incense, candles, don't you dare. Amen. Don't you dare. I told you, you can sensually separate yourself. But that's you, it's not God. Amen. So, and they use other sound. And I mean, y'all may not have noticed on the internet now they're starting to promote this sound thing. Y'all got it? Be mindful of that too. Because that's what they use to do what? Create a vacuum to open you up for spirits to come in. Hello? Well, does God have a sound? Yes, it's his word. <laughs> then they're also using lights. Y'all listen? So the, the people, they want to put on certain lights in their house. Yeah. Right? And that's what it creates certain. And it does affect you physically and psychically, but it's not truly, in its essence, pure spirit. Amen. It's contaminated. It's polluted. These are things that the world are now offering young people so that they can enter into some kind of spiritual euphoria. And it's, cre it's creating a, a occult that's different than the cults we did with in the past. Amen. And so now you got to be mindful that you may be talking to somebody that's talking scripture, but they don't see scripture as you see it. Right. Give God a wave over. Them. <laughs> they don't see it as you see it. They see it as power words. Is that what I just said? They see them as power words, ways to manifest stuff. And so God is trying to prepare you and I to counteract this when we walk in the full power of his word so that they have no power in our presence and they have no power of the people that we are trying to minister to. Amen. Amen. We are light. Amen. The light illuminates. It expels darkness. Amen. That's darkness. We can even say that's darkness. That's the stuff that the fallen angels called the fallen men to, to dig into. And that's what created this, from that time to this, created this occultic witches, wallops, sorcerers, and all that kind of stuff. That's where it came from. But if we want to be victorious, we got to prepare our heart in the word of God. We got to find out what God said about everything. Amen? Now, watch what Jesus said. Everybody, I'm going to close on that because I ain't finished this. I don't know if that's going to be this long. 15 chapter of St. John, <clears throat> 7 of verse. Just to put a little icing on what I'm telling you and, and, and to motivate you why you should do it as a child of God so you can see what Jesus said. Now, we already know that Jesus is the word of God, right? We already know that there's no salvation apart from him, right? So all to be saved, you got to be in Christ, right? Now, watch what he says. 15th chapter, 7 verse. How are you seeing? If you abide in me, remain, stay, continue. And my words abide in you, remain, stay, continue. What do you say? Stop. You should who ask what God will. You can be trusted. 
Don't no, get that. Amen. Once you abide in Jesus and the words abide in you, you can be trusted. Amen. Peter said to the man at the gate of beautiful third child of Acts, seven go have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. You are ministering. And you are sharing the faith. Amen. And you have done what Jesus said. Abide in him and his words abide in you. Whatever the situation is, at that point, Oh man, I said I would let that be the end, but look at the 16th chapter. There's a verse and I want you to look at right quick. See, can I find it right quick? Yeah, the 25th verse. Well, 26th verse. Because you're out there in your ministry and the situation is going on. Said that you never understand people want to believe in God. Amen. Maybe not in the God of the Bible. But they want to believe there's a God. Because everyone wants to believe that there's somebody who will be there to bail them out. Y'all got me? The problem is they heard a whole lot of rhetoric. A whole lot of talk. A whole lot of rapping. But seen very little. And they tired of it. But if you abide in Jesus and his words abide in you, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Look at this verse. At that day, you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I am come out from God. Isn't that what he said? Amen. Now back up to the 23rd verse. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. What? Who has Jesus? Nothing. But verily and truly, truly, I sincerely, I say to you, whatsoever you, you, you shall ask the Father in my name. Did y'all see that? He, the Father, will give it you. Amen. Hitherto you ask nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive. But your job may be full. Asking the Father in Jesus' name is asking it in Jesus' stead. Now, what does that mean? If I go down to the <clears throat> IGA and set up an account, and set up an account, and I put Richard and Paul's name on my account, it's my account. It's my name they give it back in. So when they go to go shopping, they'll say, charge it to Pastor Clawson's account. Y'all get me? And they'll say, who are you? You say, I'm Richard McKellar. They'll look on that list. Okay. Amen. But you got what you want. But it's charged my account. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> we'll finish this up. <laughs> Lord will nothing happen Sunday. Amen. I think y'all seen something there. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for the privilege and opportunity to share the word which you put in my spirit. And I thank you, God, that you sent your word and delivered me. And I thank you, Father, that you're fighting this battle. Satan and defeated, they found broken and destroyed. I thank you, God, that word was so rich tonight. Let it not be, don't let them let it slip. Let the word weigh heavy upon them. That they'll realize that they need to get the word in their heart, not just in their mind, so they can come out their mouth, so they can experience what you've already spoken. Father, we want to praise you because all the glory and all the honor belong to you. And Jesus, we thank you for making it possible for us to experience these things so that we can be children that are pleasing to the Father. In your precious name, good sure we pray. And they want to say amen. amen. And amen again. Amen. Look at they say, remember, remember. it's up to you to get that word yeah. in your heart yeah. and in your mind yeah. so that you yeah. can be who God says yeah. you're supposed to be. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God for all those listening to my world social media. Appreciate you tuning in. 
Uh, I wish we had more people tuning in, but thank God for you, 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 you. Uh, share the message. Share the message. Amen. We're trying to make disciples for Christ. Amen. Share the message. God bless you, Lord. We're not happy to see you Sunday.